Thank you. Please be seated. back on the record here in Fremont County, Idaho. It's the 3rd of August, 2020. It's just after 1 o'clock. CR 2220-755 State versus DeBell. DeBell, excuse me. Uh, we will continue forward. Uh, we're in the middle of the witness, Detective from Aseo. The cross-examination of, of Detective had just completed. We're to the redirect. Uh, we'll have Detective from Aseo come back to the witness stand. He's still under oath. Your Honor, the state has no further questions for Detective Hermosillo. Okay. Detective Hermosillo, you, you, uh, you don't need to come back up here then. Uh, next witness, Mr. Wood. Uh, the state calls Ron Ball. Detective Ball, if you'll stand here in front of the plexiglass at the witness stand and raise your right arm and face the clerk. Can you saw me swear for the testimony you're about to give in this cause, now can you show me the truth, the whole truth, and not the truth? Yes. Detective Ball, will have you sit right here at the witness stand. Once you've been seated, you can remove your mask. Detective Ball, if you'll pull that microphone uh, up and aim it up towards your chin. This one? Yep. Okay. Pull it down just a little bit. Uh, there you go. Mr. Woods, you may inquire when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, will you please state your name and spell it for the record? My name is Ron Ball, B-A-L-L. -L. Where are you currently employed? I'm currently employed at the Rexburg Police Department. How long have you been employed there? I've been employed there for a little over 28 years. Okay. What is your current title? Our current title is I'm the lieutenant over investigations. Okay. Have you completed the post academy? I have. I hold a basic, intermediate, advanced, and a management certificate. Uh, also, I am a graduate from the FBI National Academy in 2015. Okay. Uh, Detective. Through your work at the Rexburg Police Department, were you involved in the investigation of the disappearance of J.J. Valley, J.J. Vallow, and Tyree Ryan? Yes. Okay. Uh, Detective, were you present at Chad Daybell's residence on June 9th of 2019? I was. Okay. What were you there for? Uh, we were there to conduct a search warrant at that residence. Okay. Are you aware what, if anything, was discovered on his property? I am. What was it? The remains of two bodies. Okay. Do you know if uh, those remains were sent to the Ada, Ada County Coroner's Office? Yes. Um, how do you know that? I was personally involved in uh, uh, taking them to Ada County. Okay. Yeah, Ada County Coroner's Office. Okay. Um, what day did you take those to the coroner's office? We took the remains to the coroner's office on June 10th. Of what year? Of uh, this year. Okay, so 2020? Yep. Okay. Uh, did you continue to work on this case on June 12th of 2020? Correct. What did you do that day? On that particular day, uh, myself, Detective Ray Hermosillo, uh, Detective Kakimanu from the Fremont County Sheriff's Office, and uh, Fremont County Coroner Brenda Dye went back to the Ada County Coroner's office where we received and took in uh, evidence that was uh, uh, the state lab had or the coroner's office had retrieved from the bodies. Okay. Uh, were you involved in actually loading said evidence into the coroner's truck that day? Yes. Were you able to personally observe the evidence and or the packaging it was in? Yes. Uh, do you know who was in the coroner's truck? Uh, the driver of the vehicle of the coroner's truck was uh, Detective Kakimanu with Fremont County Sheriff's Office and then uh, uh, Fremont County Coroner 
Brenda Dye was a passenger in the vehicle. Okay. And where were you during the transportation of the evidence? Myself and Detective Hermosillo were in another vehicle traveling with them. And did you ever lose sight of the coroner's truck? No. Did the coroner's truck ever stop prior to arriving at the state lab? Uh, it may have stopped at some traffic lights, but uh, that would have been the only stops. Okay. Once you arrived at the state lab, what did you do? Uh, once we arrived at the state lab, we met with uh, somebody outside, a representative from the state lab. We then took the property out of the back of the vehicle and then walked it inside the Idaho State Forensic Laboratory. Okay. Uh, so were you personally involved in moving the property from the coroner's truck to the state lab? Yes. Were you able then to view the evidence and or the packaging it was in? I did. Was it in the same condition it was in when you loaded it into the coroner's truck from the Ada County Coroner's Office? Yes. Do you know generally the evidence you were involved in transporting? Um, it was quite a bit of biological evidence. There was uh, some um, garbage bags, there was some duct tape. Um, quite a bit of it was biological samples. Okay. And when you say biological evidence, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, swabs. Um, there were uh, uh, fingernail clippings, fingernail swabs, and those type of things. Okay. Excuse me? Okay. Once the evidence was taken into the state lab, what, if anything, did you do? Once the evidence was placed in the state lab, um, or taken inside the state lab, I then went to a location with one of the uh, property management people there. That evidence hadn't been checked into the Rexburg Police Department yet because I had just received it and we were still in Boise. So I had to sit down. I had to get... Uh, my office on the phone. I talked to uh, Sergeant Colette Davison with the Rexburg Police Department. I went piece by piece of evidence and described to her what that piece was and she then entered it into the computer system back home or back in Rexburg and it was assigned a uh, number and then once that number, once I had that number I then gave that to the representative from the Idaho Forensic Laboratory and they then took custody of it. Okay. Your Honor, I'd ask that the witness be handed State's Exhibit 11. You've marked that, Mr. Wood? I have. Judge, could we approach for a minute? You may. Uh, we're going to go back in chambers, though. I, I think because of the plexiglass, it requires the attorneys to speak so loudly that it's really hard to keep it silent. So we'll, uh, we can go back in chambers, which is fine.
Thank you. Please be seated. We'll be back on the record in State versus Daybell. The court took a brief recess to have a sidebar with counsel for the state and the defense. Uh, the issue has been resolved. It's my understanding. Mr. Wood, you may continue. Thank you, Your Honor. I'd ask that um, State's Exhibit 11 be handed to the witness. Exhibit 11 will be handed to the witness. Mr. Pryor, you've had a chance to review that now. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. Uh, any objection to the admission of Exhibit 11? Did he move for admission? He I did not. I have not moved yet. All right. I'll so let I think that... I have to establish a couple things, Your Honor. That's fine. Uh, Detective, do you, do you have State's Exhibit 11 in your hand? Yes. Have you seen that document before? I have. And are you familiar with that document? I am. Uh, can you look on page two and tell me if that document is signed under penalty of perjury? It is. And does that, who does that document, uh, what organization does that document uh, purport to be from? This document is from the Idaho State Police Forensic Services. Your Honor, I'd, I'd move to admit State's Exhibit 11 into evidence uh, for purposes of identity. For purposes of identity, Judge, there's no objection. It will be admitted for purposes of identity. Your Honor, I'd ask that the defendant be handed what's been marked as State's Exhibit 12. Mr. Wood, did you say defendant? Exhibit 12 will be handed to the witness. Thank you. Uh, Detective, do you have Exhibit 5 in front of you? Or I apologize, Exhibit 12 in front of you? I do. Do you recognize that document? Yes. Have you had a chance to review it? Yes. Uh, what organization does that document purport this to is, be from? This is from the Idaho State Police Forensic Services. Uh, can you look on page two of that document and tell me if it is uh, signed, under, signed under penalty of perjury? It is. Your Honor, the state would move for uh, State's Exhibit 12 to be entered into evidence pursuant to Rule 5.1 for Pryor. purposes of identity. For identification purposes, Judge, there's no objection. For identification purposes, it will be admitted. Exhibit 12. Your Honor, the state would ask that state's exhibit 13 be handed, be shown to the defense and then handed to the witness. <clears throat> exhibit 13 will be handed to the defense counsel. Exhibit 12 is being handed to the witness. Excuse me, Exhibit 13. Uh, Detective, do you have uh, State's Exhibit 13 in front of you? I do. Do you recognize that document? Yes. Have you seen it before? Yes. Who does that document report to be from? It is from the Idaho State Police Forensic Services. 
And uh, can you look on page two of that document and tell me if it's signed under penalty of perjury? Yes, it is. Your Honor, the state moves uh, that uh, State's Exhibit 13 be entered into evidence pursuant to Rule 5.1 for purposes of identity. No objection, Judge. Exhibit 13 will be admitted for purposes of identity. Thank you. The state has no further questions for Detective Paul. Cross-examination, Mr. Pryor. Thank you, Judge. Thank you very much. Uh, Lieutenant Paul, uh, the items that are referenced in those reports, the swabs and all of that, uh, initially were those, were, thank you, were those items uh, obtained by you? Did you did you do the swabs or was that someone else? That was somebody else. And those folks provided you with the with the property, is that correct? Correct. And can you pl just briefly describe how you were provided that property? Was it on site at Mr. Daybell's house or where? Well, I guess I'm, I'm not sure which part you're talking about. Was well, it at the lab or at the house? The swabs that were obtained. Okay. Okay, those were done where? They were done at the uh, Ada County Coroner's Office. Okay. Now, the other evidence that you made reference to that you transported to the, to the uh, uh, I believe, the lab for, or to, to coroners mm -hmm. to be trans with the folks from Fremont County, prior to that being transported, whose care and custody were those items in? Be the county coroner. Okay. So at some point, there was a transport from originally from where the items were obtained to the county coroner. Were you part and parcel of that uh, transport? I, I did not transport those items personally. So that was transported by uh, Fremont County Coroner Brenda Dye and Detective Vince Kaikamanu. The last name again? Kaikamanu. <clears throat> And Mr. Wood, do you mind spelling kayak morning for the record so that uh, <laughs> we can all have that clear for right now? Does anybody know the spelling of that? Uh, I can guess, but I don't know that I can spell it correctly. Um, it's K A A I A K A M A N U. Thank you. May I? Proceed, Judge? You may. Thank you, Your Honor. So at some point from the site, we're going to call him Detective K. Okay. And the coroner obtained the items from the site and took them to the coroner's office. And at some point, you went from the coroner's office to the... Correct. Okay. And at all times, from the initial uh, obtaining those items, on what day did you obtain those items? We would have obtained them items on the 12th okay. of June. And then on the 12th, you took those directly to the... Uh, Idaho State Forensics Laboratory. Right, okay. And at no time did those items lose sight or did, no. it, did you... Uh, all right. No further questions, Judge. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Pryor. Mr. Wood, any redirect? No, Your Honor. Thank you, Detective Ball. You can be excused in the witness stand. Mr. Wood, can this witness be excused from the court? Yes. No objection. Okay. Court's going to take just a moment for cleaning of the witness stand. Mr. Wood, you may call your next witness. State calls David Stubbs. Can I get Mr. Stubbs' title, please? Hi, uh, Detective. Thank you. Mr. Wood, is that uh, exhibit that's on the easel necessary for right now, or can we move that out of the way? You know, Your Honor, uh, we can move it out of the way. 
Why don't we just set it up against the wall, facing the wall for right now, to give a little bit of room. Detective Stubbs, if you'll stand here in front of the plexiglass, raise your right arm and face the clerk. Detective Stubbs, you can have a seat right here at the witness stand. Once you enter this cubicle, we'll allow you to remove your mask. Thank you. If you'll pull that microphone down a little bit and aim it up towards your chin, we're keeping a record. Mr. Wood, you may inquire when you're ready. Thank you. Uh, Detective, can you state your name and spell it for the record? Uh, David Stubbs. Uh, last name S-T-U-B-B-S. Thank you. What is your occupation? Uh, I am a police uh, detective sergeant uh, with the detective division for the Rexford Police Department. Okay. How many uh, years have you been a detective? Uh, detective uh, since the year 2000. And how long have you been a police officer? Or how long have you worked for the Rexford Police? Approximately 25 years. Okay. And are you post certified? Uh, correct. All right. Um, do you hold any certificates of training in electronic forensics? Uh, I do. I'm certified as a operator and analyst in the Celebrite systems. Also, I have certificates in access data systems. I do have training in multiple uh, other uh, data systems as well. Uh, are you a part of the Idaho Crimes Against Children Unit? I am part of the uh, State of Idaho Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, yes. Thank you. How did you become involved in the investigation regarding the search for J.J. Vallow and Tylee Ryan? I first became involved um, with Detective Hermosillo in reference to locating a vehicle that was in interest um, to Arizona police. Later, um, I became involved uh, after uh, a complaint was put in for a welfare check on juvenile J.J. Uh, Ballow. Okay. Uh, have you ever met the defendant, Chad Daybell? I uh, have. Okay. Uh, where did you meet him? Uh, I met him uh, when we uh, issued the search warrant for his property uh, in his kitchen. Okay. Have you ever met the defendant, Lori Vallow? I have. Judge, could I have some foundation on the date, time, and place? They gave us the place, but the date and time would be helpful. In That's, terms of I'll, I'll lay that foundation. Uh, what date, uh, you, you referenced a meeting defendant, Daybell. What date did you meet him? Uh, I don't recall the exact date. It was the date of the search warrant service. Uh, which search warrant are you referring to? The search warrant where we search the property, the Daybell property. Right. Does June 9 sound like it might be that June date? 9th would be correct. Of 2020? Um, and what time of the day did you meet him? Uh, we uh, knocked on the door and entered the uh, residence around 7 a.m. Okay. Have you met the defendant, Lori Vallow? I have. Uh, do you know the approximate date of when you met Lori Vallow? Uh, that would have been November 26th, 2019. Do you know approximately what time of day you met her? Uh, it was in the AM. Okay. Uh, where did you meet her? Uh, 565 Pioneer Road, apartment number 175. Was anyone else with you when you met her? Yes, I was accompanied by uh, Lieutenant Ron Ball and later uh, was joined by Sergeant Kellen Wetton. Okay. And what was the purpose of you meeting her that day? Uh, we were uh, trying to perform a welfare check of the welfare of J.J. Vallow. Okay. Uh, were you wearing a body camera that day? 
I was. Okay. And did your body camera record your meeting with Lori Vallow? Yes, it did. How many times did you speak with Lori Vallow that day? Uh, two different occasions that morning. Okay. Uh, and generally speaking, what did you ask her? Uh, our focus was to uh, inquire on the welfare or the location of J.J. Vallow and uh, make sure he was okay. Okay. Your yeah, Honor, we'd ask that uh, the witness that states Exhibit 14 be uh, shown to the defense and then handed to the witness. The bailiff will hand Exhibit 14 to the defense. The bailiff has handed Exhibit 14 to the defendant, or the, excuse me, the, the witness. Detective, do you recognize State's Exhibit 14? I do. Have you, uh, what is it? Uh, it is uh, the recordings from my body camera. Um, there's two different recordings on this from the 26th of mm -hmm. November, 2019. Okay. And have you reviewed the contents on I, that disc? I have. Are they true? Right. Are the contents of that disc a true and accurate representation uh, of what you saw that day? They are. And is it a true and accurate representation of to the best of your knowledge of what your body can record? Yes. Your Honor, the state would ask that uh, State's Exhibit 14 be entered into evidence. Mr. Pryor? If I may inquire in aid of objection. You may. Can you give me an idea, officer, as to when you reviewed that for its accuracy on the date and time? Can you speak a little louder? Oh, I'm sorry. We pulled out a microphone. What date and time did you review that to ensure that there was an accurate copy of what transpired uh, on your interview with Ms. Vallow? Uh, I, the last time I reviewed this was this morning. Okay. All right. No further questions, Judge. Thank you. All right. Any objection to the admission of Exhibit 14, Mr. No Pryor? No objection, Judge. Thank Exhibit you. 14 will be admitted. Your Honor, we'd ask that this be placed into the uh, DVD player. You wish to publish it right now? Yes, we wish that the state moves to publish it, Your Honor. Right. We'll have the bailiff or whoever's in charge of IT put that into the player. I'll remind the media that pursuant to my earlier ruling, I'm going to prohibit the photographs or the videotaping of the publishing of this video here in court. The court will be at ease for a moment while this uh, is loading. Mr. Wood, take all the time you need. Thank you. As soon as it pops up, we'll start it.
Now, may I approach the... You may. Please uh, don your mask. Mr. Wood, do you need a brief recess so you can uh, troubleshoot the technology here? We may need to. We came in to test this the other day and it worked just fine. So we might need just a second, Your Honor. We'll be in recess for a moment. Judge, can Mr. Daybell, may Mr. Daybell and I be excused to go in the hall to discuss some matters? That's fine. Thank you, Your Honor.
you. Please be seated. We'll be back on the record, continuing with the direct examination uh, of Lieutenant Ball. Is that correct? No, excuse Stubbs. me, it's uh, Stubbs. Stubbs, I apologize. Yeah. Detective Stubbs. Mr. Wood, have you worked out your technology issues there? Yes, I want to thank uh, Josh, the IT guy, for taking care of that for us. He's very uh, competent. You may proceed when you're ready. Thank you. Detective, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start playing this and then pause it and have you tell us what's going on when you recognize what it is. This is my body cam footage as uh, myself and Lieutenant Ball uh, approach the apartment number 175 the first time on the 26th. Okay. Police Department, how are you? You got a minute? You alone or is that help? Or? Uh, my brother's here. Okay. This is Detective Stubbs. Hello. Nice to meet you. So, we're here. Wow, this is a big mess. I just talked to the guy on the phone. And what did he ask you? He was just saying that he wanted to do a well check on JJ. So, JJ would be where? He's in Arizona. Who's he with in Arizona? He's with one of my friends in Arizona. Oh. Hi. Oh. Hey. You got a notepad? No. Want me to get one? Uh, no, no. Come here. It's, you mind if he comes in? No, come on. So, Sorry. who's the friend he's with? My friend Melanie. Her Melanie. son has autism. Her name is Melanie Gibbs. I gave him all the information on the phone. Okay, so he can call him? Yeah. Or Discord. Yeah. What is all this? We're, we're a little what concerned. Because, Why? well, the officers who were here earlier yeah. were checking, and they got a bad vibe that, like, something was going on here because uh, nobody knew anything about a child. They weren't talking. It's because a lot of stuff on? that was going on. If you want to know, it's a lot of stuff. So, well, that's why we're concerned because very, it just was kind of weird. It is very weird. I've had to move around a lot. One of my brothers is trying to kill me, not the brother that lives here, obviously. He's kind of my protector. <laughs> my other brother was in with my husband who was trying to kill me for my $2 million life insurance policy. No, well, no. <laughs> so a lot of stuff has gone on in this last year. It's been a horrible year for us. I've had to move around. And so I was going to move back to Arizona put my son back in the school there because I tried to put him in school here, public school at Kennedy. Okay. He went for two months. We tried it, but he had such a hard time. Now, the person who called is my sister-in-law, but she's his natural grandmother. He's adopted by us. Okay, so her son, who is a drug addict, okay. had a baby with a girl who's a drug addict, and they took him from, you know, CPS took him. Okay gave him to the grandmother, she came and got him, and then she wanted us to adopt him, which we did. And we loved By him. Us, we my about? husband and I, who died earlier this year. Okay. He passed away. Since he Sorry passed away, that. she's been trying to fight me for him and being really horrible to me and that kind of stuff. The 
she's kind of the paternal grandmother. Okay, thank Does you. That makes sense? That's I'm what sorry. I mean. The paternal grandmother. <laughs> yeah, he has autism and ADHD. He has. He doesn't really talk to people. Like he's he's very special needs. So I had him in a special needs school there. She was trying to. So what happened was, my husband, who we were married for 15 years and had raised all these five kids together, switched his life insurance policy to her. Right? To, <laughs> to his sister, okay. who got a million dollars when he died, and we got nothing for me to raise JJ, and all the kids got nothing, and everybody got nothing. She got a million dollars. So I knew she was going to try to sue me for him or. JJ? Yeah, because she now has this million dollars, so she can hire people to help him, and I have nothing. Cause my but you have nothing, legal but custody. He's my son. I adopted him right. when he was two years We had him from the time he was eight months old until mm -hmm. two years old. So she does nothing that wants to cause me trouble. So I don't tell people the truth about where we are and what we're doing because of those reasons. So I look like a suspect, but I am not a good person. I've raised all of my kids. I've done everything that I'm supposed to do in life. But everyone is causing me trouble right now. So We don't want to cause a lot of trouble. How long have you been here? We only been here since September. Okay. We moved up here in September. My daughter to go to BYUI. Your mom. daughter goes to BYUI? Yeah. Does she live here? Mm-hmm. So mm -hmm. we just, it's been a nightmare, but I'm gonna go back to Arizona so I can put him back in the special needs school. He couldn't do the school here. It was too hard for him. He would scream and cry, take him to school. The principal would have to come out, try to drag him out of the car. Like, mm -hmm. it's just, it's too hard. But I just don't tell people where I am. I don't tell her where I am ever. Okay. And she doesn't have any legal rights to anything. Like she's been horrible to me since my husband died. My understanding, she never called to to try to get the child. You know, hey, I'm interested in the child back. You know, but that. I know, but she sends me these emails with like the dates and like like she's putting up court stuff. You know, like just documenting. I haven't heard from him in all this time, and so I've told her that he's fine. But she, see, and we hadn't heard any of that as far as. I'm just saying she's doing this as part of that, yeah. is my understanding. And our only concern in this whole thing yeah, is, that is, the, is the child. I got it. And, and so that's that's where we're at on the... Uh, so. And then so we I were just a little her. weirded out when, you know, and, and I understand now that we've heard your side of the story. It's awful. They just, the, I feel like I'm being tracked all the time. I'm like, why are police coming to my well, door? What's they, were, idea? they said they were out visiting with two guys, and I'm assuming Who one's is? your brother. Yeah. Who was the other one? The other guy they were visiting with. There were two. Visiting. Well, we had two detectives over here trying to. Looking for you oh. a little while ago. Oh, because I was at the store. And they ran into. Well, probably one of your brothers. In My the back brother here. and his friend, probably. Oh. Who's been that? moving. Chad. Chad from around here? Mm -hmm. What's his last name? Bill. <laughs> okay. Right. It's, uh, it's just a mess. It's constantly causing me trouble. Chat to chat to D A Y B E L O. Mm -hmm. He's an author. Doesn't he live like out in the? Isn't that the Chatty Bell that? Uh, did his wife pass away recently? I think so. Is that him? I I don't know. I bet it is Chatty. D A Y B E L L. But it sounds familiar as an author. I think I, know, I think I know one of his. He's got a couple of daughters. No, uh, he has lots of kids. Okay. I'll bet it's safe. All right. Well, do you need anything else? Sorry to bother you. Thank you. Yeah. We don't mean to be a problem. I'm sorry that people are constantly knocking on my door. At my door, looking for me, and I just don't want to be found. So. Have you had problems? Because I think we only had. My bro well, the reason I'm moving is because the brother that was going to kill me, that we found emails and texts with my ex-husband my husband at the time, came showing up here. So he found out where I was, and he was knocking on my door. No, this was your brother? One of my brothers. He showed up here and was knocking on your mm -hmm. door. He lives in Kansas. And you said something about you were getting threatening emails? Well, the, no. Just after my husband passed, I found emails and texts between them that they were planning all this stuff to get rid of me. Do we need to worry about him coming over? Well, that's why I'm moving back. 
I'm leaving, and I'm not going to be in a place. I'm going to live with my friend, Melanie. Don't tell anybody her name, Gib, because I don't want anything in my name. I put the apartment in my name, but I've been staying over here with my brother because he protects me. Okay. He's very protective I just want to know if he shows back up, you know, you can call. Come and take care of it. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I just, like... It's just a nightmare. I mean, I canceled the insurance policy since my husband passed, so there's no money if they kill me. <laughs> and what are they going to do with JJ and Patty? Like, what do people think? Okay. So. Well, <laughs> if you have a problem, so it's back up, feel free to call us. Okay. We'll come and run you off or something. Okay? Yeah, All right. Okay, we'll get out of here. Safe Thank, you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. See ya. Uh, not, not. Uh, Detective Stubbs, did you return to that same apartment that day? Yes. Uh, when uh, Detective Hermosillo and Detective Hope could not contact uh, Melanie Gibb, a few minutes later from this encounter, uh, we went back to her door uh, to inquire about how we could get a hold of Melanie Gibb. And is that what is on the second uh, film file here? That is correct. File? want us to ask Lori if she would get This was the friend that she's going back down to live with, she said. Right. She's got a daughter named Melanie. Let's just see if she will call and have Melanie get a hold of Hope and just do a verification. Because she, apparently she's not answering the phone down there. Could you get a hold of her at some point and say, can you please call back the officer that's been trying to call you? Okay, sure. Yeah, because I think they are at the movies right now. Okay, that, that, he's been trying to call her or other officer. She's not answering. Okay. But if they're at the movie, that's... He's probably at Frozen 2 right now. Yeah. Because that's the one thing he wanted to do. I'm Frozen 2. <laughs> yeah. Frozen 2 is so cold yeah. here. So. I don't know if I can handle a whole bunch of here. That's probably why. Yeah. So if she'll just return his call, that'd be great. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yes, sir. Detective Stubbs, I asked you earlier about your uh, getting certification certifications regarding computer and cell phone forensics. Uh, have you been involved in any analysis of cell phone records related to this case? I have. Okay. Are you familiar with location records which can be found on electronic devices? I am. I, can you tell us? Can you tell the court generally? explain generally about location records that can be found on, on electronic devices? So it all will depend on the device itself, um, who the provider is that is 
uh, tracking location, web searches, a uh, number of different apps will will track your uh, what you're doing. Okay. Um, and do you know how those records are generated? Well, it just depends um, on the provider what kind of stuff that they are uh, searching for, what 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 their target, if you will, their target market is. Um, it can be, uh, you know, your, what you searched for, uh, so they can better uh, plan for, for that stuff, or, or uh, uh, GPS data, latitude, longitude, dates and times that you do things. Okay. Um, have you used location information from a cellular device successfully in any other cases? I have. Okay. Um, have you analyzed any location records of electronic devices as part of your investigation in this case? Yes, I have. Detective, are you familiar with Alex Cox? I am familiar with him in this case, yes. Okay. And do you know who he is? Uh, I've, I've never met him, but I know he is the brother to Lori Ballow Daybell and the brother-in-law to the defendant, Chad Daybell. Okay. Um, do you know where Mr. Cox is now? Uh, I have been told that uh, Mr. Cox uh, died in Sorry, December 2019. Mr. Pryor? Hearsay. Mr. Wood, there's been an objection as to hearsay. I'll rephrase the question. Okay. Uh, through your investigation, I do you know of uh, of the death of Mr. Cox? Yes. Okay. Uh, through your, uh, pursuant to your investigation, why were you interested in Alex Cox's Google data? Uh, the reason we were interested was um, we knew Alex lived in an apartment very close to Lori. We also knew because of the relationship between uh, Lori and uh, Chad being you know, brother-in-law and sister, that Alex may have some information on to where the location of the children may be. Okay. And were you, um, were you able to obtain Alex Cox's Google location data? Yes, we were. How did you do that? Uh, we issued a, a search warrant. We had information of uh, many known phone numbers, email addresses for the individuals uh, in this case. Uh, we obtained a search warrant that we issued to Google and received a return from them with results. Okay. And you may have already answered this. Did the warrant ask for just Alex Cox's data or multiple users? No, we were requesting multiple users from the information we had obtained. Okay. When you received a return on that warrant, was that, war was that return accompanied by a certificate of authenticity? Yes, it was. Your Honor, the state would ask for uh, what's been marked as State's Exhibit 15 to be shown to the defense and then handed to the witness. Exhibit 15 will be shown to Mr. Pryor. Exhibit 15 is now being shown to the witness. Uh, Detective, do you recognize that document? 
I do. What is it? It's a certificate of authenticity that was uh, accompanied the results of the search warrant from Google. And have you reviewed that document before? I have reviewed this document, yes. And are you familiar with its contents? I am. A detective, is that document signed under penalty of perjury? Uh, yes, it was. Uh, by whom? Uh, the Andrew Jordan. Okay. Uh, does that certificate of authenticity state that the record was made from information transmitted by someone with personal knowledge? Yes, in paragraph one it states that. Does, the, does that certificate of authenticity state that the record was kept in the course of regular conducted activity of Google? In paragraph five it states that as well. And does the certificate of authenticity state that the record was a regular, that making the record was a regular practice of Google? Also in paragraph five it states that, yes. Okay. Your Honor, I would ask that that certificate, certificate uh, State's Exhibit 15, uh, be entered into evidence. No Mr. objection, Judge. Exhibit 15 will be admitted. Your Honor, I'd ask that what's been marked at State's Exhibit 16 be shown to the defense and then handed to the witness. <clears throat> Exhibit 16 is being handed to the witness. Detective, do you recognize that document? I do. Have you seen it before? I have. And have you reviewed it? I have reviewed this document, yes. And are you familiar with its contents? I'm sorry? Are you familiar with its contents? I am. Uh, Detective, when you sent your search warrant for uh, the accounts from Google that you talked about, uh, did the accounts provided by Google include Google's subscriber information yes that is what this document is in reference to okay and is this document a true and accurate representation of the uh, subscriber information you received for one of those Google documents yes this is one that uh, that Google sent us for one of those accounts yes your honor the state would ask that states exhibit 16 be entered into evidence no objection judge exhibit 16 will be admitted Uh, Detective, can you look at the, uh, the top of the first page of Exhibit 16? Okay. Um, and do you see where it says Google subscriber information? I do. Is there a name identified with that subscriber information? The name of Alex Cox. Is there an email associated with that subscriber information? There is the email is Homer J Maximus at gmail.com. Is there any other data on that subscriber information page? Uh, there is a subscriber phone number which we had previously identified as belonging to Alex Cox. Okay. Sorry, I can't hear you. Detective, when you received the return on that search warrant, um, uh, what was the size of, of that document in terms of, of pages, if it were to be printed out? Oh, the size of this entire document was thousands of thousands of pages. Okay. Um, we've discussed Alex Cox's Google location data. Um, if that were to be printed out, do you know approximately how many pages it would be? 
So just the location data for this particular account, if you were to print it out, would have been over 28,000 pages. Okay. And if, if you were to open that data up on a, um, on a computer, what, what format is, does it come in? Uh, if you opened it up, you would see it in what would be like an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. Um, and what kind of information is located on that spreadsheet in general for Google location data? So for Google, it would be uh, uh, the uh, date time stamps. Um, it would be the latitude and longitude of the uh, said, if you will, pings or pins that were placed. Uh, it would have um, a radius of air that Google has interpreted. Um, it would have uh, what, they have what they know as the device being used to access the Google system. And then there's another number that is really associated with Google and whatever inner workings they have that would have to be Google that explains it. Okay. Um, due to the large size of, of the data, I think you said it was over 28,000 pages of user location data, correct? Correct. Have you prepared any summaries of data you found in that document? I have prepared some, uh, yes, yeah, some documents. Uh, can you tell us about those, those documents? So what I did was I took a, uh, an aerial photograph um, and that I took specific dates and times of interest and just uh, pinpointed on the map using GPS latitude, longitude, time date stamps uh, to place pins on a map to show location. Okay. And how many, uh, how many summaries have you prepared? I've prepared two at this time. Okay. And were those summaries prepared with data you verified from Alex Cox's Homer J. Maximus account? Yes. And that is the same data that you received um, uh, included with that uh, certificate of authenticity? That is correct. We introduced earlier. Okay. Your Honor, the state would ask for state's exhibit, what's been marked as state's exhibit 17, to be shown to the defense and then handed to the witness. Do you want to hand it to the witness or put it on the easel, Mr. Wood? Uh, we, we can put it on the easel. We'll just put it over the top of the previous exhibit. Oh. oh. Would you like that handed directly to the witness? Your Honor, I, uh, I actually would like to have the, uh, before I enter that into evidence, well, yeah, before I ask for that, uh, I'd ask for the State's Exhibit 17 to be entered into evidence. Okay. Mr. Pryor, any objection to that? I think a little more foundation would be necessary. That's fine. Hold up here, Madam Bailiff. Sounds like Mr. Wood is going to lay some more foundation. Would you like that exhibit handed to the witness? Your Honor, I, yes, I'd be fine. Okay. Uh, Detective, do you recognize State's Exhibit 17? I do. I prepared this. Okay. Uh, what data did you use to prepare that with? Uh, the location data that I had obtained from the Google account, Homer J. Maximus. Okay. And uh, was that data verified with the Homer J. Maximus account? As far as verified that I have checked and double-checked uh, my locations, 
from the map overview to the uh, GPS or latitude longitude given by Google. Okay. And how did you prepare that? Um, well, there's a number of ways you can prepare it. Um, this particular uh, aerial photograph, um, we just, uh, you can do this using uh, Google Earth, Google Maps, Ping Maps, or Bing Maps, uh, Microsoft, anyone, if you enter a location um, with the GPS coordinates, um, doesn't matter from my experience, anyone that I've used will always come up with the same waypoints. Okay. Your Honor, this time I'd ask that States Exhibit 17 uh, be entered into evidence. And I'd, I'd add that that's pursuant to rule, out of a rule of evidence 1006, which allows for summaries to be prepared of voluminous data. Mr. Pryor? Judge, I don't have a problem with how he's applying 501. The difficulty is he has a demonstrative exhibit that he's trying to mark without any foundation of what's on that in terms of the picture and what it represents. So there's still a foundation problem here. The state's more than happy to lay that foundation, Your Honor. I'd like that laid out so that there's a clear record of exactly what uh, that picture that is in uh, Officer Stubbs' hands represents. So I, I need some more foundation in that regard, Judge. All right. Detective Mr. Stubbs. Woods, please, please oh. do so. The base layer of that that uh, summary document you have, what, what is what does it purport to be? Uh, this overhead view is of the property uh, of 202 East, uh, 1900 North, uh, the Chad Daybell property. Okay. And have you been at that property? I have been at this property, yes. And have you... Uh, have you, are you familiar uh, with the layout of the property and landmarks on that property? I am. Okay. And is that, uh, is that base layer, that image, is that a uh, true and accurate representation to your knowledge of, of what that property looks like? It is. Okay. Um, and then what layers have you added to that uh, summary? Uh, so, besides the photograph itself, um, I have added a, if you will, uh, type of table of contents at the bottom where I can explain um, the other things that I put on here, which would be red triangles that are uh, specified by a number next to them that correlate with the latitude and longitude that I have placed on, on this map. Other than those things, that is the only thing I've added to this photograph. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, at this time, the state would move forward. There won't be an objection this time, Judge. Exhibit 17 will be admitted. Your Honor, before, I, before uh, 17 is published, would ask that what's in market states exhibit 18 would be shown to the defense and then handed to the witness. Exhibit 18 will be handed to the witness. Uh, Detective, do you recognize State's Exhibit 18? I do. Is it one of the summaries that you were uh, you testified to earlier? Yes, this is a second summary. Um, did you prepare that summary with data you verified came from Alex Cox's Homer J. Max on his Google account? Yes, I did. Okay. What does the base layer of that image purport to be? 
uh, the base layer of this uh, is the apartment complex at uh, 565 Pioneer Road where both uh, Lori Vallow, Daybell, and Alex Cox resided. Judge, and I want to be clear that he's referring to Lori uh, Vallow and Alex Cox, and he did use the Daybell last name, but I want to make it clear that he's in no way implying that Chad Daybell was part of that. Is that correct? Living in that residence? As, as living here? As living in that residence that's in your hand right now. That's correct. Just so we have a clear record, Judge, because the Daybell name was used. The record will so reflect. Uh, how did you prepare that summary? Again, this was an aerial photograph taken. Um, uh, there's been a, a couple layers added to this. Uh, this was, was uh, this image I, I received from our GIS department, which is the department uh, of the city who maps, if you will, all of the city, uh, also their, uh, if you will, the boundaries of residents and so forth and so on with addresses and so forth. So the second layer shows uh, these apartments and the apartment numbers associated with the individual apartments. Again, my table of contents at the bottom right that uh, I received that data off of the Google uh, location services I had received from Google with the Homer J. Maximus account. Okay. Your Honor, the state would ask that uh, State's Exhibit 18 be entered into evidence. Judge, I would ask that there's an identifying factor telling me the date of that uh, summary because there's been no representation of the exact date that that summary represents, so I would like that from the witness. There's been an objection as to foundation with the summary. Mr. Wood, do you wish to lay that objection? Uh, the detective, what are the, um, what are the dates associated with the data you entered onto that, uh, that image? Uh, the reference numbers is that what we're referring to the gps coordinates i placed on here yes uh they are uh september 9th uh three of those on september 9th also uh september 14th and september 6th are all dates that i've associated on this map You know, at this time, we'd ask that states do the 18 be entered in evidence. Judge, just clarification in lieu of objection, if I may. Mr. Pryor, if you'll speak up just a little bit, I'm having I'm a difficulty. Just clarification, and a, a, uh, if I can inquire in aid of objection, Judge, just very briefly. You may. Thank you, Your Honor. Officer, September 9th, you said there are three uh, uh, readings at that particular point. Is that correct? I have mapped three different. Right. Yes. And those represent just Alex Cox. Is that correct? Uh, not Alex Cox, but the device belonging to Alex Cox. Okay, and then on the 14th of September, it's the device belonging to Alex Cox as well. Is that correct? That is correct. And then on the 6th of September, it's the device belonging to Alex Cox. Is that correct? That is correct. And you, you already foresaw, you, you foresaw, excuse me, you already anticipated my question is that's merely just a device that in no way can establish whether or not the person is present at the time of those locations. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Nothing else, Judge. Thank you. Right. Mr. Pryor, I feel like your questions were cross-examination questions. Any exhibit, any uh, objection to the admission of Exhibit 18? No, Judge. Exhibit 18 will be admitted. Thank you. Your Honor, I'd ask that uh, Exhibit 18 be published and be placed on the easel. Would you like that placed over the previous exhibit that's on the easel, Mr. Wood? Uh, yes, please. Court, do you whatever want, is easiest for court personality. Do you want both of those summaries to be uh, visible as you're questioning the witness? Uh, one at a time, Your Honor. We'll start with 18 and then go back to 17. Okay, why don't we take a brief recess right now. We're going to crank the air conditioner in this courtroom for just a moment, see if we can cool it down by 10 or 50 degrees. And uh, we'll go back on the record here in 15 minutes. It's 2.30, so why don't we plan on... Uh, going back on the record at about 10 minutes to 3 o'clock. Thank you, Judge.